it's really windy out. Hey guys, it's Misty, and I'm going to do the bookshelf scavenger hunt tag. This tag was started by the library of Sarah, but I was tagged by Books with Dylan, which is awesome because I had been wanting to do this tag and just hadn't found the time, and it was slowly slipping down my to-do pile, and um, Dylan tagging me kind of gave me the push I needed to get it done, so thank you, Dylan. Alright, so basically... It's just a scavenger hunt, you're given a list of things that you have to find, and if I was wise, I probably would have gone through and pulled everything before starting the video because sometimes it's hard to find things on my shelves, but that's not how a scavenger hunt works. You're supposed to get your list and then go find it. So that's what we're going to do. The entire list is down below if you want to see, and I'm going to get started. The first one is to find a book with a Z in either the author's name or the title, and I know I have some. In fact, this was one of the first ones I thought of when I first saw the tag. Like, a, a book title popped into my head. But it's not coming to me. So we're gonna go with... The Vicious Deep by Zoraida Cordova. She had to have loved in elementary school when they would do reverse alphabetical order. Okay, the next one is to find a classic. I'm going to refer you to my Jane Austen shelf, which is full of them, and retellings of them. But rest assured, I have many. Find a book with a key on it. If I still had my copy of the archived, I bet you anything that had a key on it. Um, key to the Golden Fire Bridge should have a key. Yeah, <laughs> and it has a very minuscule one. Key. Next is find something on your bookshelf that is not a book. Honestly, take your pick. <laughs> I have very messy bookshelves. But if you want my pick, I'm gonna go with my doozer. Find the oldest book on your bookshelves. Um, somewhere I have a copy of a really old English primer, like 1908 or something like that, but I couldn't find it the last time I looked for it, so I'm not even going to bother. And instead, I'm going to go with the first really old book that I find, <laughs> which will be 1943. Little women, why you no have date? Nineteen forty-two. Okay, I'm sure I have older books than this, but we're gonna go with Leaves of Grass, nineteen forty-two. Next is find a book with a girl on the cover, which again, I mean, take your pick. We're gonna go with the one sitting right next to my camera, which is Vessel by Sarah Beth Durst, and it is a very beautiful cover with a very pretty girl. Find a book that has an animal on it. I'm sure I have many. But I'm going to try to find one that has an animal as like a key figure. Life of Pi. Oh, bigger than the person. There we go. Life of Pi has a tiger. Find a book with a male protagonist. I could go with Vicious Deep again because that has a male protagonist, but I'm not going to. Harry Potter's too easy. Where is Beautiful Creatures sign? Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll, which, correct me if I'm wrong, the main character is Ethan, right? He's the narrator? I'm not entirely sure of that. So just in case, we'll go with The Replacement by Brenna Yovanoff, which has Mackie as the main character and is fabulous. Next is find a book with only words on it. Oh boy. I might be stumped on this one. Does this count? The girl who played with fire? I don't know if that little bit of like hair or whatever it is, that like coloration, does that disqualify this book? Does having all kinds of different colors count? Because that just has words, it's just cruel. That's what I'm going with for these. That's all I've got. Next is find a book with illustrations in it. Um, I have plenty of kids' books. That would be easy. And middle grade books tend to have illustrations, but that would be easy too. Sam and Oof. Shine by Lauren Miracle has these sort of black and white illustrations in between each chapter, or photos in between each chapter. But then the chapter headers have illustrations of magnolia branches. I should leave that out for a response video to my book chat this month because 
that has some design elements that I love. Find a book with gold lettering. This one's easy because I just showed it the other day, but where did I put it? <laughs> the Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is <laughs> looking like a Bible. <laughs> Next is find a diary, true or fictional. I could go with the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian, though it's not really diary style. How about This Is All, The Pillow Book of Cordelia Ken, because a pillow book is kind of like a diary journal type of thing. She's had quite a life judging on the thickness of that book. Next is find a book written by someone with a common name, like Smith, and I have a book whose author's name is Smith. I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Dodie, however, not being the most common name. Next is find a book that has a close-up of something on it. Does this count? The eye, the isolated eyeball on The Diviners by Liva Bray. If the entire cover needs to be the close-up, then... Ooh, ooh, I got it. Aw oh, yeah. The Pearl of the Soul of the World, which has a close-up of an eye with some Freaky eyelashes. Next is find a book on your shelves that takes place in the earliest time period. Does the Virgin Earth take place? Like Cromwell? No, that's not early enough. If I still had the Zanga books, like I would win because those were prehistoric. <laughs> Daughter of the Forest takes place in sort of early medieval times. I want to say like late 1200s, early 1300s. Find a hardcover book without a jacket. I just showed one, Daughter of the Forest has no jacket. And I have a number that are like that where I've taken the jackets off to protect them and then lost the jacket. Um, but I'm gonna go with a kind of twist on that. The Flavia de Luce series by Alan Bradley has um, printed right on the hardcover, no slip cover, which I love. Just found a close up of a butterfly. Oh, Adoration of Jenna Fox would have been good for a close up. Find a teal or turquoise colored book. This is when organizing your books by color really comes in handy. I could go with the Vicious Deep again because that's got a good amount of teal. But I'm going to go with Revived by Cat Patrick, which kind of has both in it. I do have plenty of turquoise and teal, but that shelf is a mess. Find a book with stars on it, and this one is easy. For Darkness Shows the Stars by Diane Buterfriend. Stars all over the place. Lastly, find a non-YA book. I'm guessing by this she probably means no children's at all. No children, no middle grade, no YA. Um, which is easy. I have lots and lots of adult books. And I'm gonna go with one that I started to pull out earlier. Which is Three by Kurt Vonnegut. It has Cat's Cradle, Slaughterhouse-Five, and Breakfast of Champions. Things falling over in the background. Alright, so that's my scavenger hunt. Um, some of them were kind of iffy, but I think I pretty much found everything. If you would like to do the scavenger hunt and no one has tagged you yet, I definitely tag you. Feel free to do this if you want to, and if you do, leave it as a video response, even if you've already done it, because I'd like to see which books you found. That's all for me for this, and until next time, happy reading! And if you have any tag videos that you want me to do, or that you've tagged me in and that I've missed, let me know. That's all. Bye.